finger flicking fuckery. I still don't understand why this is, this is a thing in magic. People love to learn little techniques that they could spend a lot of time learning. And then when they show it off in front of people, they're like, oh, that's, that's cool. That's cool. But you know what? People love it. And it racks in that sweet, sweet YouTube revenue view count money. So, you know, Pig Cake loves that sweet, sweet YouTube revenue money. Yeah, so today I'm going to show you guys uh, a false shuffle that could be described as a Benihana false shuffle. Meaning, if you ever go to Benihana's, they have the little chefs where they're chopping up a whole bunch of shit. And then they're just throwing a bunch of stuff into the air. That's kind of what this looks like because of the initial cut. I'll just... I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, the, uh, headphone, headphone warning, uh, headphone warning. Yeah, trendy as fuck. Pig cake is up with the time. So it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's complete deck false shuffle. Leave the deck in the same order. Um, you don't have to do the initial jump cut if you don't find the, uh, the time in your day to, uh, to learn that, but you could still learn the other stuff and still do the cut just as well. So it looks a lot more complicated than he is. Again, it's a complete deck false shuffle. If you happen to be Rain Man, you would have noticed that because you would have counted the deck uh, without even me having to mention it. So the, let me just start here. So the first thing you need to learn in this cut is this this cut right here, right here. So this is a uh, the, what I like to refer to as the Benihana cut because uh, you're just flipping shit everywhere. So it's not as hard as it looks like, but there's some precise timing that needs to be done in order to fully, uh, to fully complete the cut. No other better, what are better, better way to do it. So first things first, you're going to hold the cards in your right hand and you're going to do the beginning of a swing cut, meaning you're going to hold the cards like this. Now, if you try to flip the card like this and throw it, it might work, but at the same time, it probably won't work. So the way that I found to consistently make sure that the packet stays together in midair and defies gravity is you start with a swing cut and then you put this packet down and put your forefinger there to hold the packet in place. So pretty much you're going to do a couple things at this point. You're going to lightly move your wrist in a, in a way that these cards would move now perpendicular to the, the horizontal table. So it's going to happen here is you're just going to jerk your wrist up this way. And of course, let go of the packet with your finger. So about this point, you're just going to let go of the packet with your finger. Now what should happen, what should happen with enough sufficient practice is that the packet should stay together and uh, be anticipating catching with your left hand. So to repeat that one more time here, you're gonna start a swing cut, you're gonna put the packet down on top of the deck, you're gonna hold it with your finger. Now you're gonna gingerly toss the packet in a way that the packet should only flip once and be ready to catch it in this cool kind of David Copperfield cross arm position. So you're gonna be doing this whole fucking like crazy uh, fucking Burt Wonderstone position here in anticipation to catch the packet. So at some point you're going to let go of your finger and the packet should stay together and be caught in the left hand. So that's the first step of the cut. <laughs> Once you complete this first part where you catch the cards in your left hand, you're going to do a couple things with your hands at the same time. Now your left hand, all that's going to happen is you're going to do this false cut. So this false cut is a version of pretty much the first step of a one handed shuffle, but in a continuous cut. So you're going to hold the cards in this position uh, it should be the Charlie A position right here. So it should be the first initial position you do when you first get the uh, Charlie cut. However, you're going to use your finger here to break off this packet. And uh, it's going to get hard here when you first start learning this because because what's going to happen is that these cards are just going to fly everywhere. But once you learn the right grip, and once your fingers have developed the dexterity and the strength to do this, it shouldn't be hard at all. So you're going to use your forefinger of your left hand to separate this packet in half. Now it's going to happen is that you're going to pretty much balance this packet 
on the tip of the forefinger as you stretch your hand out to accommodate the other packet. So you should be left in a position where you are holding pretty much this packet and balancing it on top of the nail of the, of the left forefinger and extend your hand. So what's gonna happen is that that packet is gonna clear this initial packet and put you in a position where you're, you're ready to do a Charlie air cut. So in European slow motion. <music> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Some of that sweet, sweet production value here. So one more time, you're gonna use this forefinger to separate this half. You're gonna extend the fingers, holding this packet between the forefinger and the thumb of the left hand. And again, things are gonna be balanced here. So this, this packet is gonna be balanced on the forefinger of the left hand. So initially, you're gonna be worried about letting it go, but gravity is your friend here. Gravity is your friend. So you're gonna use gravity to hold that packet in place as you extend your forefinger and switch the two packets around. So in this position, all you're gonna do is a Charlie air cut. You're gonna use your forefinger to push up on uh, that packet and just complete a Charlie air cut. So that's pretty much all you're doing with the left hand. So after you've caught the packet, that's what's happening with the left hand. Now at the same time, the right-handed packet, all it's doing is you're gonna get into a swing cut position. However, you're gonna modify the grip here a little bit. You're gonna do the typical swing cut. And after you complete this portion, you're gonna grip the bottom packet with your middle finger, your ring finger is gonna be up there and your pinky is gonna be in the back to grip it. So at this point, you can actually let go with your thumb and the packet should be held in place by the ring finger, the, the pressure with the pinky and the pressure with the middle finger of your right hand. So all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna get into this position and you're gonna use your thumb and your forefinger to lever up that packet and just switch positions. So at a whole, what's happening with the right hand is you're just getting into this grip between uh, the fingers over here. You're letting go of the thumb and you're switching the two packets. So pretty much this is all happening at the same time that the left hand is doing this portion. The right hand is just switching these two packets. So by the time your hands uncross in this uh, very sexual David Copperfield position, you're gonna be left in this position. The original top packet's here and the original middle packet is gonna be here and your left hand should be held, uh, the, it should have the squared packet. So what's gonna happen is you're going to pretty much revolve and hold this packet over here and ready for another Charlie air cut, which you complete. And this packet goes on the bottom of the deck. So that should complete the false shuffle as a whole. One more time, your left hand is completing this cut. Your right hand is getting into this position by switching both packets. It takes the bottom packet in the right hand, complete the Charlie air cut, and this half, if you wanna be fancy, you could do this little fancy double lift, Gordon Bruce double lift, which is you're just sliding your thumb down the length of the packet and putting it on the bottom of the deck with a little spin. So that should be a complete deck false shuffle uh, for that last part in European slow motion headphone warning, here it goes. Booyah, there you go, look at that. Sweet production value. Hopefully that rakes in the sweet dozens of YouTube revenue ad cents that I collect every month here. So that's uh, that's pretty much an entire deck fall shuffle. It looks a lot more difficult than it actually is, but once you get the uh, motion down, it should be a simple enough cut that makes you look like the magic superstar that you wanna be. Yeah, so there you go, that's, uh, that's the shuffle. Practice it well, you could do some variants of it if you want. At this point, you could do a revolution cut if that so happens to be your fancy. If you want, uh, I usually have ended this in some sort of weird shuffle. One of these, one of those weird uh, weird things. So you can just play around with the different variations, but that's just a uh, Benihana false, false cut that I hope you guys could have a lot of fun with. Uh, ma uh, make sure to uh, uh, do this, uh, pa Patreon, uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe. 
Oh, fuck. Almost had a, almost had a YouTube stroke there. So there, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go uh, watch reruns of Chris Angel Mind Freak specials and try not to spontaneously ejaculate at the thought of his ab brushing against my cheek. See you again when I 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 see you again